Today we talk about this resurrected classic that somehow feels like it falls short from its aged clone. Our subjects are the Iskorama 54 CU and the Doolens Primes that go with it in the not so recently released, yet still not so popular, Isco for All kit. I'll talk about the Iskorama first, then the pairing with Doolens. Right at the release, we started with a good paradox. The name Isco for all, but a high price point and limited units aimed at rental houses. So is it Isco for all or just for some? Isco for all is Schneider's revisiting of Isco's big hit, the Iskorama 54, the very first adapter I reviewed here. A few things have changed, but most haven't, so let's recap. The Iskorama 54 was one of the best anamorphic adapters out there before the current anamorphic renaissance. It has 95mm front threads and 77mm rear threads, an advertised squeeze of 1.5 times, more on this soon, and poor minimum focus. This is one of the areas of improvement. The original minimum focus was 6 feet or 2 meters, but the new one is 1.35 meters, or 4.5 feet. Hence, the CU added to the name, for close-up. We have Simmon's new 95mm diopters too, which will be great replacing the Focar A and B, which are impossible to find. I'm in fact using Simmon's plus 0.5 95mm diopter right now. The newest Karama also features focus gears, 330 degrees of focus throw, and markings in feet and meters. The adapter weighs 1100 grams, just shy of two and a half pounds, and it's good that we have a foot support in this new version. You'll notice the front rotates like the original version, and that's not cool. The folks at Schneider said that this was to reduce costs, but this thing is still pretty costly, so more on the revival? The mechanical design is almost identical to the Iskurama 54, except alignment is controlled by a screw that you tighten or loosen versus the button in the original. The glass though is brand new and we have strong coatings that render desirable flares completely invisible, sad face. For many years, Iskurama held the title of the only single focus anamorphic adapters, or the holy grail of anamorphics. Isco was the first to implement a variable diopter system for focusing. First, we'll set our taking lens to infinity, then we'll throw the adapter in front of it and align it so the squeeze is applied in the direction you desire. Now that we're entering the subject of taking lenses, let's look at these three primes from Doolens. These are the mini primes, small and lightweight T2.4 taking lenses made to resemble optics from the late 1970s and early 80s. Inspired by the looks of the classic Gallius 44 and many Zeiss Distagons, the mini primes are apochromatic lenses, which means they feature additional elements to keep both chromatic and spherical aberrations in check. For the record, Spherical aberration is one of the most common anamorphic distortions. In the Isco for All set, we have a 43, a 58, and an 85mm. They all feature 72mm fronts, which still need a 72 to 77mm step ring for the Iskorama to screw into them. They were actually the reason for the Isco for Some debate. Schneider, working in conjunction with Duolens, designed special coatings for this pairing, the A plus Ember coatings. The issue is these took a bit of time to get ready, so they started a limited run of the set with Doolens' original v coating. There were a thousand of these sets, and the folks at Schneider decided to focus those at rental houses. Now let's backtrack to the step of setting infinity. A very common issue with setups like this is we'll knock the focus ring around during the day, and only much later notice that the lens has been off focus. To address this, we have a metal piece just to lock your focus ring on the taking lenses. 
Sometimes the best performance isn't literally at the infinity mark, and these locks will help. If you're broke like me, you can also just use gaffer tape for locking your focus ring. The infinity mark being off though is a critical issue with anamorphics. I've been talking about flange distance and its effects for a while, and you always want to ensure your spherical lenses are working proper. These ones can come in EF or PL mounts, but they don't have shims. They're designed to be super compact, so the way you adjust their flange first requires some light disassembly of the front of the lens, and then tweaking the helicoid in relationship to the focus marks, which gives us the advantage of being able to see the results on the camera while making adjustments. On the topic of adjustments, it's worth mentioning that the iris ring on the mini primes is pretty much at the mount. I can manage fine by hand, but if I wanted to control this remotely, iris pulse would be quite a challenge to rig. Let's look at performance. As expected, the sharpness of the Iskaroma 54 CU is flawless with all taking lenses. These max out at T2.4 and the ISCO is good all the way to F1.4, so lots of safety margins here. For coverage, we get completely clean corners with the 85 and 58 mil taking lenses at full frame 3x2 open gate on the S5.2. The Iskaroma starts struggling at 40 mil on full frame, so the 43 mil widest lens is a stretch. Performance would be better if the rear optics of the ISCO got closer to the front glass in the 43 mil. As is, we have some soft vignetting on the corners, more noticeable on open gate than in 16x9 video. When we get to the topic of distortion, things get a bit interesting. Remember I said we were going to talk about the squeeze factor again? Well, here we are. When looking at this pan, we can see a lot of overcompression on the edges of the frame, right? A quite interesting thing that the folks at Schneider taught me while chatting about this project is that there is no standard for where you should measure the squeeze factor of a lens. In this case, they went with the largest area squeeze, but that is only accurate when using a 50mm taking lens, in which about two thirds of the image feature a 1.5x squeeze, but the center has a little less squeeze. I think this is a terrible argument. First, because no one is framing for those edges to be good and valuable narrative information. Second, because if we're averaging the squeeze, it means the result will look off effectively in every part of the frame. The other thing is this squeeze on the sides only shows up at the widest end. When we're using longer lenses, we're focusing more through the center of the glass, so we're getting a more even squeeze. And then as a result, when de-squeezing by 1.5, we are overstretching the footage. So forget about the edges and know that in the center, this has a squeeze of 1.42 times. The same as all other Iskaramas. Flares are subtle in terms of anamorphic streaks. A little blue from strong light sources. And it shows much better on the wider 58 and 43mm lenses. That would be better if the mini primes didn't bloom so much around the strong light source. On that note, most flaring comes from the mini primes and they have wild personalities with this cool rainbow flare. To control it, simply stop the lenses down a touch to T2.8. About pricing and availability, the ISCO for all set costs 10 grand at BNH. During Cine Gear, Schneider announced they were breaking the ISCO for all set so folks can get only the parts they want. I haven't found the US pricing, so we're going with the European info. The main thing is now you can buy just the Iskorama 54 close up for 4,100 euro and match it to your own taking lenses. Like how the DP Matthias Bolliger did for the opening of the second season of Para We Are King using Cook S2, S3, and a Lumix S1H. Taking all of this in and looking at the results, these are good lenses, but they were already good before, and Schneider had the opportunity to make them great. Like everything that Max1 is doing for the Maxiscope slash Nexiscope, Schneider could have done for the Iskorama 54. Yet they didn't, and that's quite disappointing. The advertised squeeze is still 1.42, minimum focus is still not that great, we have a rotating front. We lost the awesome flares of the non multi coated version. The improved minimum focus is welcome, as well as the focus gears and foot support. But I feel these are pretty minimal changes in contrast to what could have been done here. 
These changes also make it hard to justify the high price of the adapter, which still doesn't feel like ISCU for all. I find it awesome that Schneider worked with another lens maker for a spherical set, and the focal length choices are fine, but the slow aperture also dampens the capabilities of the Iskurama, and why would you settle for 72mm threads when you need 77? Custom coatings are great, and nothing is better than avoiding green flares. Still, the details could have been worked out better. I feel it's a project that had so much potential, but got a lukewarm release which in turn disappointed a lot of folks, or at least disappointed me. What are your thoughts on the ISCO for all? I'd love your input and to hear if I'm the only one feeling disappointed here. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you learned something cool today. I'm Chita Fahadens and I'll see you next time.